the registry, one of the most important items under your computer's hood. But what is it? It's basically just a database, kind of like a library card catalog. You can think of entries in the registry as sort of like cards in the card catalog. A registry key would be a card, and a registry value would be the important information written on that card. The Windows operating system uses the registry to store a bunch of information that's used to control and manage your PC and software. So it can be anything from PC hardware info to user preferences and file types. Almost any form of configuration you do to a Windows system involves editing the registry. And the good news is that you rarely have to access these massive files directly. Instead, you typically use more user-friendly applications that you're used to. Chances are, whether you know it or not, if you're a regular Windows computer user, you already have experience editing the registry. Nevertheless, there is a registry editor tool that allows you to open the registry and edit it directly. Before Windows XP, Windows came with two registry editors, regedit32.exe and the much older regedit.exe. Starting with Windows XP, Microsoft got rid of this model and created a new regedit32. And even though there's no longer two separate programs, entering either regedit or regedit32 at a command prompt brings up the same program. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the registry editor. And one way you can do it is to hold the Windows logo key and press R to open up the run dialog. And you're gonna go ahead and type in regedit, so R-E-G-E-D-I-T, and hit OK and hit yes for the administrative access and this is it this is your registry editor I'm gonna go ahead and maximize the window and you can see that the registry is organized in a tree structure similar to the folders on a PC and right off the bat you're gonna see five main subgroups or root keys we have H key classes root H key current user H key local machine H key users and H key current config you can open these root keys by clicking on the arrow on its left, and you can see that more subkeys are listed underneath. A subkey also can have other subkeys or values, and values define aspects of the subkey. And each of these root keys has a specific function, so we're going to look at each individually. So the first root key we're going to look at is called H key classes root. This root key defines the standard class objects used by Windows. But what's a class object? A class object is a named group of functions that defines what you can do with the object it represents. Pretty much everything that has to do with files on the system is defined by a class object. And you can totally change these settings in the registry editor. But usually the better way is to choose more user-friendly methods. So for an example, let's go ahead and search this computer's registry for the .pdf file extension. So I'm going to go ahead and hold Control and push F, and then just type .pdf, and hit Find Next and you can see it shows you a class object that associates the .pdf file extension with the name acro exchange.document.dc I'm not sure exactly what that is but this name is associated with any .pdf file so to look at the properties we're gonna go ahead and search this section for that exact title so we're gonna go ahead and again I push control F and I'm just gonna type it in so it a C R O E X C H dot document dot D C and I'm gonna hit find next and I'm gonna go over to this section down here and I'm looking for right here the shell open command and you can see right here this sub key tells the system everything it needs to know about a particular software item from which program to use to open a file also known as its file association to the type of icon used to show the file. The next key, or rather keys, we're going to look at is the H key current user key and the H key users key. As you probably know, Windows is designed to support more than one user on the same PC. And with each user, there's personalized information, like desktop colors, screen savers, and even the contents on a desktop. H key current user stores the current user settings, and H key users stores all of the personalized information for all users on a PC. And like before, you can certainly change items such as the screensaver here, but the better way is to choose a more user friendly way, such as right clicking on the desktop and selecting properties. And the next root key we're going to look at is H key local machine, and this contains all the data for a system's non user specific configurations. And this encompasses every device and every program in your PC. 
One of the most common manual registry edits is to delete auto starting programs. So to get to this section we're going to go ahead and open up the H key local machine. We're going to open up software and we'll go down to Microsoft and go all the way down to where it says Windows and then we want current version and then we want run. Okay, and you can see right here it'll show you the keys for the applications that automatically run when you turn on the computer on this particular computer so it looks like I just have GreenShot and Microsoft Security Essentials now before you go ahead and start deleting keys if you want to stop the program from auto starting first of all see if you can do it through the program itself in the settings of that program but if you're gonna do it here in the registry editor go ahead and hit file and you want to export a copy of your registry. So if you haven't picked up on it by now, the registry is a pretty important part of your computer's system. Therefore, you don't want to go and make manual edits unless you've done some research that tells you to do so. Just keep in mind you're going to risk breaking things in Windows. Applications might not start, utilities might not work, and worst of all, your computer could explode! Also, your computer might not boot. So to prevent all of these problems, you're going to want to make sure that you create a backup of the registry before you change anything and put that backup in a safe place outside of the computer, whether it's online or on a thumb drive. Thanks for watching.